Welcome back or welcome, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm Kelly. My name is Kayleen. My name is Jada Wright. This is Annie. I'm Kelsey. And today we're going to step into our power for 40 minutes. Today's class is here for you to learn more about your body and its alignment. And everything's flowing beautifully. I love this. Oh, now it's time for my favorite exercise. We're going to go into mermaid. This workout will have you glistening, sparkling, and sweating. So let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Flexia Talks. My name is Kayleen and I am the founder and CEO of Flexia. And I am Kelly, the head of content here at Flexia. So we work together at Flexia where we're redefining wellness to help people move better with connected Pilates. In today's uh, episode, we wanted to open with a segment called Overheard in the Studio, where Kayleen and I have both been Pilates instructors for a while now, and so we have lots of silly stories about things that we've experienced in the Pilates studio. So we thought we'd open today's episode with a funny or silly story that's happened to us in a Pilates studio. So Kayleen's got a great story, and I'm telling all you listeners, the only plot that she has given me to go off of, she hasn't told me the story yet, is called Kayleen's No Pants Story. So, <laughs> so listen up. Let's hear Let's hear what this silly story is of uh, a studio experience. I'm, I'm excited to hear what's going on. Yeah. So uh, this is a, uh, this is not my personal story. I do have to preface that, but it is like super close to me. This is not like some gossip that has been uh, handed down telephone style. This is... Uh, this is, this is, I know this happened. <laughs> um, so this happened to another teacher that I worked really closely with and uh, she was teaching a class. It turned out to be a very small Pilates class. And um, normally during her classes, you start on the floor and then you move to the reformer. And this particular day, her third person um, to fill the class showed up late and she walked in the door wearing like a floor length maxi skirt and a blouse and uh, obviously ready for Pilates. <laughs> and so this other teacher was like, Hey, do you need to change? And she goes, well, I forgot my clothes today, but someone, you know, let me borrow their shirt. And she kind of holds up a wadded up like t-shirt. And uh, so she's like, okay, go change and then come back and join us on the mat. And the lo like, I don't know what the logic here is. This, there had never been like a explicit policy about attire other than the normal, like toe socks or no toe socks. Like, I think that's probably it. And, <laughs> and so this woman comes out of the bathroom and the teacher is teaching class and the woman is wearing like a triple XL t-shirt and no nothing else like no pants like you can't you can't see obviously the shirt goes down to her thighs and so the teacher kind of is like what and you know like the in your head you're like are there bike shorts under there is this right. like the new thing right and that's so, what i would have thought <laughs> the the woman walks over to the to her place and lays down and it becomes very evident that she's not wearing any pants. She just got oh. tidy whities on. <laughs> oh gosh. How do you even begin to address this situation? I mean, I don't know what the appropriate response here is. Like, bless her heart. I don't know what could have been going through her mind. It's would have to be so embarrassing to not have your clothes and wear someone else's clothes and yada 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 and then but to go into class and just be like all of my pilates in my group class i'm gonna do with no pants on i don't i don't know like to each his own i guess as long was, as every all the bits are covered i don't know <laughs> it was crazy well i think what ended up happening is there was a lost and found and so we found you know, some, some pants to oh, remedy good. the situation. But um, there was an awkward, like, flabbergasted minute of my Pilates teacher training did not prepare me for this. <laughs> no. Was there a sign put up in the studio after that about 
pants <laughs> must be worn. Like no shoes, no shirt, no pants, no service. No service. <laughs> No, no, there wasn't. Um, I think it was just a more concerted effort to, because we want to be sensitive, right? Like we want you to, to show up. We also want you to be properly dressed, but like, anyway, having those conversations yeah. is hard. You either take a stance or, or you kind of go. Into yeah. radar. So from then on, it was like, okay, what is in our lost and found? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully there's a pair of some nice uh, Pilates pants in there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe my my goodwill trip will actually go into the lost oh. and strategically. <laughs> well, this anyway. is a note. If you, I, I mean, this podcast is for, you know, people who do Pilates. But if you own a studio, have a lost and found on hand. Might, <laughs> might be uh, helpful to have some items stored there. It can't help you in the situation where, uh, workout clothes are purposefully tiny and tight. Right. Um, but, you know, you never you never know <laughs> what's going to happen next class. You never know. <laughs> um, well, yeah. we can't be the only ones that have have a wacky story. No. I we, there's no way. I mean, there's no way. So, what we want to do is invite you to share your Funny story. It can be anonymous or not. You tell us. But we want you to share your story or your funny quote overheard in the studio with us. And we'll put it in another segment on the show. So email your story to podcast at flexiapilates.com with the subject line overheard. And we'd love to share your story with all the other listeners because oh. we got to get some laughs out of this. Come on. We Absolutely. I can't wait to he to read those stories. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> this is uh there's a lot of laughter and and humor and craziness that happens yeah. in our industry and we should all enjoy it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure we're I mean Pilates Studios it's not unique. I'm sure there's lots of crazy stories that have happened in gyms and and stuff like that. So um I want to hear Pilates Studio ones, but if you've got something that happened at a gym, I mean why not? Might as well <laughs> share it here. Oh, uh, yes. Awesome. So this episode is really about exploring more about the background of Flexia and Kayleen, in particular, our CEO, who is on the other end, on the other microphone over here. And uh, if you've come across our socials or you found us on the internet, you might be curious as to how Flexia came to be. And uh, so this is a great podcast to listen to and, and get to know us a little bit more. So um, first of all, Kayleen, I mean, I am all, we, you know, you and I, and I'm sure listeners are going to hear over the next few episodes how, you know, empowering we are about women and, and doing some really rad things. And one of the things that I really admire about you, Kayleen, and, and think is really cool is that not only are you a Pilates instructor, but you actually started out as an engineer. Yeah. So I'm an engineer, a mechanical engineer by training. I loved math in high school. I loved building things. And I went to college and got my degree in mechanical engineering and actually worked in product development in the automotive industry um, and in medical devices and in the nonprofit industry working on wheelchairs. And then I eventually made my way to being a design engineer for another Pilates equipment manufacturer. And that was where I first found Pilates. Yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about that experience. So had you done Pilates before you got this job, this job with this other company? I had actually done it one time and it is kind of random because my mother is a physical therapist and um, I grew up playing competitive soccer. I tore my ACL in high school twice, had surgery, did the rehab, still for the next 10 years suffered and struggled with knee pain and you know what fitness was right for me. And my mom took me to actually a Pilates class. It was, we did a duet. So it was the two of us on equipment with a local woman in our town. Um, and I don't remember what the like driving factor there was, maybe just 
because we knew the woman and we wanted to try it and whatever. And so my mom took me. Um, and it was fun, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but it was one of those things where it's, I wasn't going out of my way as a 21 year old to go back and do more private Pilates sessions. <laughs> like it wasn't, it was not on my radar. Um, and then when I got the job at this company, um, I started taking Pilates classes for employees. So taught there by other employees who were instructors. And I just wanted to learn more about what I was working on, what I was designing. I got to design, build, test, break, like walk out onto the production floor. Um, and lo and behold, within six weeks of just starting regular group classes, my chronic knee pain suddenly disappeared. <laughs> amazing. That's an amazing story. It's awesome. <laughs> so it was at that point I was like, there's something really cool about this. I like the vibe. This is not like CrossFit. It's not like Group X at, at the gym. It's not like mm -hmm. any of the other things I've ever done. I want to create this environment for people to move in. And so I started my teacher training. That's awesome. And so not only now are you building this equipment, but you're teaching on the equipment. So you got very, very familiar with Pilates equipment, very intimately familiar with all the ins and outs and how to move bodies on it. Yes. I, I, it was actually a really, to me anyway, it was a very nerdy, interesting study in, okay, what am I being taught in the class? And what do I learn and notice about the hardware design? And why are those two, th two things the way they are? And how do they intersect? And how do they not intersect? Right? And, mm -hmm. and finding the gaps in teacher teaching and mechanical design. And um, it was really fascinating. I worked at that company for a couple of years, uh, got continued my teacher training. And then I left. And, and for the five years prior to starting Flexia, I actually split my time between teaching Pilates in a local studio and traveling the country as an independent Pilates equipment technician. So I got my hands dirty. I do love that about uh, engineering. You can't kick, you can't get that out of me. <laughs> I don't want to get my hands dirty. Um, and I would travel to homes, studios, and gyms and, and do installation, maintenance, and repairs of Pilates equipment of all kinds. Um, all different manufacturers. All different manufacturers, home users, gym users, which are very different than studios. Mm -hmm. So um, I really got to wrap my head around that side of things. And then I'd come home and I would teach a regular, you know, part-time <laughs> schedule of, uh, you know, 15 hours or so a week in a Pilates studio doing privates and group classes. Um, and that really gave me a real, uh, a very, what I think is a unique lens into the Pilates world. Um, Absolutely. and also showed me where all of the holes were, <laughs> <laughs> in what we were doing, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a Pilates teacher, we have people come into the studio and they're just like, they just love Pilates. It is, it's for so many people, it's the only thing they do fitness wise, mm -hmm. because it, it's so different than I'm going to go run. I'm going to go weight lift. I'm going to be really sore, or, you know, no pain, no gain. Very, very different environment. Um, and for many other people, it you know, helps them run, run marathons later into life or run them faster. Um, mm -hmm. And seeing that um, effect on people, on Pilates students, and then coming into the, seeing the inside of the Pilates industry from a business standpoint, um, made me really want to change things. And it ended up coming about that the best way I could change things was by starting Flexia. That's an amazing story. I absolutely love how you understood the piece of equipment, lots of equipment, uh, but the reformer in particular and why you created this machine. Because as an instructor, 
in all in all honesty, we have our preferences, right? A lot of instructors have a reformer manufacturer preference. And a lot of times it could be the one that you trained on um, or depending on the type of, you know, if you're working with athletes or, or whatever type of clientele you specialize in uh, can determine which piece of equipment you uh, favor the most. And the unique perspective that you have and the reason why uh, Flexia is so cool is because there is no instructor out there that understands this piece of equipment like you do. This, this intimate knowledge about how it's constructed, how it's supposed to work, how it's supposed to function. And then on top of that, understanding how you're supposed to teach on it, how you're supposed to move on it, what's it supposed to feel like, what's it supposed to do. Um, and I, I just can't say enough how incredibly proud of this product and this reformer because it it's as an instructor, I have seen with my eyes and all of the people whose homes we've we've infiltrated. <laughs> uh, how amazing this reformer works for people. And and I'm just so, just so proud to work here. I mean, I'm not just saying that just to like fluff, you know, this podcast. I mean, it's really, really true. Uh, so I, I'm just, I want people to experience it. It's so cool. It's awesome. So tell me, walk us through um, Flexia's inception and how yeah, I know you said, you know, I want to create something different. So walk us through what that was like and how we got here. This is a quick interruption to say that if you like this video, you should check out the Flexio Reformer, a studio grade reformer designed to fit in your home and your life. You'll never wonder how you're doing or what to do next with the award-winning online studio that delivers real-time feedback and after-class report cards. Go to FlexiaPilates.com to learn more. All right, back to your video. One of the stories that sticks with me from, uh, there are many, but one of the ones that sticks out about, hey, why are we not, why are we building a smart Pilates reformer? Like what, where is this gap in Pilates? Where can the next round of innovation occur? And I, uh, I used to teach group classes and I love them. And something that happened quite often was you'd have someone, a, a pair, one of the pair of a partner or one of a group of friends fall in love with Pilates and then invite their significant other or their best friend or whoever to come take class with them. And in this situation, this one particular situation I had, a wife was taking class with us and convinced her husband to come to class as well, right? They were mid-50s, nearing retirement. The kids had left the house. They were looking for ways to still move their body that didn't hurt, that didn't flare up their knees. You know, the husband in particular had some back pain but still wanted to golf. And so she uh, convinced him to come to class. And so I got to see him once a week in my particular class that I taught that he came to and he kept coming. And after about six weeks, I remember going up to him and, and saying, Hey, you know, John, your bridge today is looking so much better than your first session with me. I'm so happy you're, you know, finding progress in Pilates. And he kind of looked at me really confused and was like, my bridge is better. <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, like you're able to go a little bit higher without any pain. You're we're, you're using a harder spring setting and you're, you know, the whole street, the, the face was more relaxed. His breathing was better. He could move at pace. He wasn't cramping. Like there are so many things Pilates instructors can see, but you can't necessarily or you can point them out, but it's hard in a group class and they don't stick with you the same way that, um, oh, I ran a slower mile today or I didn't burn as many calories, right? They, they, it doesn't translate the same. And so that was one of those things that really got me going. It was like, look, why isn't there data in Pilates? And 
And it's not as simple. And that quickly got me to the conclusion, like, it's not as simple as walking outside the studio and going, oh, I burned 100 calories today. Because actually, you don't burn that many calories in Pilates. Right. But you still feel amazing. Why is that? Yes. How can you match data with that magical feeling that you get after class and after several classes? And... um. And on the flip side, as a teacher, how do I remember, like, John was really lucky that I remembered what his first class was like. What if I wasn't his, you know, what if he never saw me until recently? Then he's mm -hmm. he's now left his progress reporting in the hands of whatever teacher shows up that one day, who may or may not have seen them before, who may or may not remember who may or may not be having a good day, who may be distracted with another client in class. like, And so at that point, my brain started spinning like, what can we do to quantify this magical thing that all Pilates teachers know is different than regular fitness? Um, and it's the, it's the, what's in the Kool-Aid. Oh yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> you know, what's um, everyone's and, drinking it. What's in it. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the, um, that's one of the catalysts of founding a smart Pilates reformer company is starting to create a language of Pilates that's represented in numbers that Pilates teachers can align with, right? That they can say, oh, that makes sense. Not, oh, I lift, you know, throw a load sensor on. Great. We lifted a hundred pounds every time you do. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything in Pilates, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I had several experiences like that leading up to uh, founding Flexia. I, I founded Flexia in 2020, worked by myself on it for about a year, um, and ran a very early pre-sale using images I commissioned on Upwork <laughs> and um, a really creative email campaign, um, spent very, very little money, and eventually convinced a couple of people to come on as co-founders. We got into this tech accelerator program called tech stars sports. Um, and that sort of transition to, you know, a year and a half into f officially founding the company shipping our first reformer. Really quickly too. I mean, from inception to sale to shipping, I mean, it was not an easy feat and you guys did it. It was incredible. Every founder has a superpower. And we often hear about founders in the news who raise a ton of money. And mm -hmm. money solves a lot of problems. <laughs> Let me tell you, it solves <laughs> a lot of problems. Um, but that's a superpower. That's not my superpower. My superpower is piecing together the technical and the qualitative Pilates language. Mm -hmm. And at the time of founding a company, being able to look at the reformers out there, look at the experience of my clients, and then literally go build a prototype, design in CAD so someone else could make it, build a few more prototypes and get it out. That's something that you can pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to an outsourced firm for. And my uh, that shortcut for our inception was I could do it. Yeah. Right. Hey, so I yeah, did you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> so so I did it. Um and I know, you know, that is um I'm really proud of that. But it that's kind of the insight into the business of like when you, when you're an individual starting a business, where are you where is your superpower? And how do you leverage that? Because trying to just copy someone else's origin story is never going to work. Well, and then you went from one to three to now we have nine, ten. 
How many of us are there? <laughs> oh, yes. Do, you uh, know, superheroes on the team, right? Yeah, we have 10 we... <laughs> Lexonians. <laughs> oh, we don't actually call ourselves that. We're just teenagers. <laughs> But um, I would say that you have created a company where everybody here has a superpower that lends itself to the totality of why Flexia is so successful and why we continue to to do this work because we actually genuinely care about what we do. We didn't just join this movement just because it was a job for us. Um, I know everybody on our team, we care about the people who are using the reformer, the people who are using the online studio. We care about our community. It's a it's a real um, I don't want to say mom and pop because I feel like that's not the right word. But the sentiment is the same is like, you you know, your neighbors. Right. It's this idea that no matter how large of a company we become, everybody who's a member of this community is seen and heard. And, you know, I personally go through all of the feedback that we get from, from our members and I read every, every bit of it. And it it goes into our planning and how we decide to do things moving forward. And we really did sign on to make movement a fun and, uh, amazing experience for people. And you've you've really opened up that uh, that door for us to be able to do that. So this is, I, I think people will be pleasantly surprised that it's a different experience than when you buy some other type of fitness equipment, right? So um, you know, it's it's truly a community of people doing Pilates together. You know, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and I think the thing I love and look forward to is looking back at the growth from when it was me doing, talking to everybody, touching literally every aspect of the business to now having a whole team. um, I love this phrase that you use, a small but mighty team. Like the things that we do with the team we have are truly impressive in the space of, of a startup and the things that we're, we're tackling. Um, but the growth both in you know the personal the personal the personalities and the skills of the people on the team over the years my own growth the growth of the company and the product over the last 2 years and then looking ahead to this is only going to get this is only going to get better like we can't talk too much about the roadmap but there's just i'm i'm just thrilled to be on this journey with my team and with our customers because um, Pilates is something that can be shared and should be shared. And, you know, I never felt like I had, to be honest, before Flexi, I never really felt like I had a Pilates community, which it sounds crazy, but I, I, I don't fit the stereotypical Pilates body or background. I'm athletic, but I'm a soccer player. So my legs are great. My arms are, they are what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm at, I can move, I'm coordinated, but I don't look or move like a dancer. I'm not a size two. I am white and middle class. So like I fit in a lot of the boxes and I don't fit in in some of them. And I can I can only use that to extrapolate what it's like for so many other people to feel like Pilates is their movement of choice and there's no one that is welcoming them or making space for them or building products for them. Um, and that that's something I hope that we can also contribute to in this, in this company is... Um, yeah, you have a right to move, to to love moving your body. And if Pilates is the way that you want to do that, let's do it. I don't want to ostracize you. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I was talking to a client the other day who she's in her 50s and she was like, Kelly, I come to do this because I've watched my aging parents, you know, and 
her mom is in her, I think, late 70s and goes to TRX and goes to Pilates and does her dance class. And it's whatever type of movement brings you joy and keeps you moving longer, it's the quality of life that really begins to show itself as we progress through our life. And, um, you know, I, I love hearing clients say, I love coming to work out with you because I can, I feel like the quality of my life has been improved and I, I just won't ever stop. I don't ever want to stop. And if they go on vacation or they leave or, or they take a couple weeks off, you know, they always come back and they go, oh, I can't ever do that again. That's just, (laughs) you know, it, and even at, you know, even me, it's like, if I take some time off of movement, oh man, that is a hard road to get back on once you've hopped off of it. But, you know, Pilates has so many variations that we can do to get back into it. And uh, our online studio is a great example of that. There are so many classes that people can take that can challenge them, that can ease them back in, that can help them if they're new, that can challenge them if they're intermediate, um, that can, you know, help them feel more at ease with their body, their ailments, um, or help them feel strong or flexible or improve their game. I mean, we've really been able to accomplish a lot in a short amount of time. And like you said, it's so exciting because we have where, I mean, just imagining where we're going to go, you know, in the, in the coming years, it's, it's going to be amazing. And I, I want everybody listening to come along on that journey because we do learn your name and we do, you know, love to hear people's people talking in the community. We interact with you in the community. It's a very like personalized experience when you come on to Flexia, which is in my opinion, extremely unique, especially for this type of modality, which Pilates, you know, can sometimes get that very exclusive you know, uh, limited uh, entry, right, into the Pilates experience. As we talked in the last episode, these pink Pilates princesses, you know, this idea of like, you have to be a certain type of body, you have to be a certain type of woman, you have to, you know, have all of the right things to fit into this perfect little box. And it's just not that way here. And that's incredibly unique, because everybody is welcome. And there's something for everyone here and you've created that space and this company and it, I just want more people to know about it because I think when people try it, they'll be like, Oh, why didn't this exist all along? Right. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's, you know, the conversation we want to keep going with our community members is can we, then turn around and and learn from you, you know, and that's, Mm -hmm. that's an important part of, of building a company, but building, um, building something that we can be proud of and that we love being a part of. I don't want it to be a, yeah, I, yeah, I want, I want to be as a consumer, I want to be heard and feel like this was made with me in mind. Absolutely. And that's what I want to do as a, as a business owner. Absolutely. So go out and get one now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's truly, it's truly a community of so many different people from all different walks of life and experiences. And to read those stories in the community and feel connected to the people that use the online studio and use the Flexia Reformer and go, oh my gosh, thank you so much for creating a piece of equipment that can fit my body or fits my needs. And, you know, that class was amazing. That class was exactly what I needed. Um, It's been an incredible ride and it continues to be an amazing journey, not just for um, our community members, but for us, for us as, you know, people who are, who are doing this stuff. So for us as Flexia, as a company. So one of the things we've mentioned here, I think there are like some segments that, or, tree branches that have sprouted off of this, you know, what's the difference between exercise and movement? Uh, We should definitely try and share some more community story, community member stories over here. Um, But I know one thing we're going to, we're going to talk about specifically is the reformer. 
um, in our next episode. Yeah. So if you're curious as to what makes Flexia so unique in this industry of reformers, tune in to the next episode and we're going to go over why Flexia is so different and unique and special. And we can't wait to share that with you. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around with us today. It was great to chat and we'll see you soon. See you next time. If you're ready to embark on your Pilates journey, go to FlexiaPilates.com to learn more about Flexia's award-winning online studio, innovative technology, and professional-grade smart Pilates reformer. With over 150 classes and new ones added every week, it's easy to find the workout that fits your life. Paired with our innovative technology that gives you real-time feedback and tracks your progress, your Pilates experience will be totally transformed. Once again, that's FlexiaPilates.com to learn more. Happy reforming!